Hackers released almost 30 gigabytes worth of data from adultery site Ashley Madison. Uber in the Philippines complies with government regulations. Android names its new operating system, Marshmallow. Can twins fool Windows 10's facial recognition system? And get a glimpse of Matt Damon on Mars. Change is everywhere. Inventions, innovations, gadgets, the internet. Science and technology is redefining the way we live. Rappler brings you the frontline news in this brave new world. Hi, I'm Matthew Ang. Hackers released almost 30 gigabytes worth of data from adultery site Ashley Madison a month after a security breach. The hackers dumped the data on the dark web. The first batch of 10 gigabytes worth of data was released Wednesday, and the second batch at 20 gigabytes Thursday. The files contain account details, including names, addresses, phone numbers, and payment transactions dating back to 2007. Data mappers plotted the locations of Ashley Madison users around the world, and the Philippines is among the areas with a high count of male clients. The data leak already exposed celebrities, including TV personality and family values advocate Josh Tuger. In a statement, he said he was, quote, the biggest hypocrite ever. In the Philippines, ride-sharing service Uber gets accredited by the Land, Transportation, Franchising, and Regulatory Board. Uber filed for accreditation at the last minute after LTFRB warned that partner vehicles need permits to operate. Its rival Grab Car was accredited in July. In May, the LTFRB and the Transportation Department issued guidelines for companies offering online private vehicle booking services. Partner vehicles need to secure a certificate of public convenience. If not, unregistered private cars operating as public utility vehicles will be fined 200,000 pesos or $4,300 and impounded for three months. M is for Marshmallow. Google's Android team on Monday said it's officially calling the latest version of its operating system Android Marshmallow. Android has a history of naming its releases after sweets, like Lollipop and Kit Kat. Android Marshmallow will go live for consumers this fall. Last week, Samsung launched its two newest top-of-the-line smartphones. Here's a closer look at one of them, the Note 5. First off, aesthetics. The new all-metal look is beautiful, a departure from Samsung's plasticky predecessors. The new Samsung Note sports an aluminum frame all the way and a glass back for protection. The catch? It's quite a fingerprint magnet, so if you're fussy about it, best to bring a terry cloth or put it in a case. Next, performance. With great power comes great battery drain. But with the Note 5, you will find yourself not needing to constantly plug your device. Battery life is a beast. In our tests, typical use with LTE and location service switch on puts the battery life at a good 13 hours. Heavy duty use with calls, texts, push email, gaming still clocks the Note 5 at around 11 hours. The camera is superior, both rear and front. No grainy selfies for the Note 5. One more interesting update is the S Pen's ability to write notes even when the phone is locked. Just get the S Pen with its new spring-loaded mechanism and use your Note 5 as, well, a notepad. Your notes are saved automatically once you're done. Twins may fool man, but they cannot fool machine. Windows 10's biometric security sensors, Intel's RealSense 3D camera technology, can't tell one twin from another. Mashable reports, online news site The Australian conducted an experiment, putting six sets of identical twins in front of Windows 10 machines. Only one twin would register his or her face with the Windows 10 system equipped with RealSense. The next step was to see if the unregistered twin could use his or her face to register on the sibling's account. How did Windows 10 do? It passed. RealSense is a combination of three image technologies, a regular camera, an infrared camera, and an infrared laser projector. The combination of the three lets Windows 10 see the world more like humans do. Microsoft claimed the 1 100,000 false accept rate for the real sense. <laughs> RPG Classic Final Fantasy VII is now available on iOS. The game was first released in 1997 on the Sony PlayStation and became a worldwide hit. We got our hands on the game and know some key differences. The app is very large at 1.36 gigabytes and will need about 4 gigabytes of free space to function properly. You can't skip the introduction because the controls do not surface until the menu appears. The controls look different. The iOS version's selection buttons are X, Y, B, and A, while the PlayStation's controllers are marked X, Square, Triangle, and Circle. 
Touch controls also overlap the blank area, making it cumbersome for those with large fingers. Graphics are clear enough, and music is as you remember it. A small option on the screen allows you to switch between analog and directional buttons. In analog mode, the touch screen allows you to literally touch anywhere to make cloud move. But it's tricky and takes a while to get used to. Save points still apply. But if you exit the app to answer a call or check your email, you will still be able to resume your game as if you just hit pause. What is the significance of Instagram opening its application program interface to advertisers? Bigger than it seems. Recode reports, the new API can boost Instagram's yearly mobile revenue from $595 million to $2.8 billion by 2017. If Instagram plays its cards right, it could leave Twitter and Google in the dust. But will opening Instagram's API to marketers turn off its dedicated users? The rollout will be slow, with Instagram hoping to avoid the backlash that other platforms experienced. Users will have the option on clicking hide this on unwanted ads, which will lay the groundwork for a more refined targeting by advertisers. <laughs> Meanwhile on Twitter, things aren't looking so rosy. Wired reports shares of Twitter dropped below $26, which is lower than the pricing set during its initial public offering last November 2013. The decline in Twitter's stock price began in late July following the release of the company's second quarter earnings. During a call with analysts, Twitter executives acknowledge it's struggling to attract new users. Though Twitter boasts 316 million monthly active users, it is yet to extend beyond its niche user base of journalists, celebrities, and other influencers to truly reach the mass market. Twitter's board also still has to find a new CEO. Co-founder Jack Dorsey is CEO at the moment, but it's uncertain if he'll be there for the long haul. The Philippine government sets the minimum broadband speed at 256 kbps. This comes after the National Telecommunications Commission signed the memorandum on the new broadband requirements last August 13. This could benefit subscribers who are not getting the speed promised when they sign up for their broadband plans. Senator Bam Aquino says, Internet providers should focus on improving existing infrastructure and government should form an interagency broadband commission. The rise of the 3D printer allows the replication of quite a number of things. Utensils, tools, furniture, and this time, Glass. MIT's Mediated Matter Group puts molten glass through a 3D printer, creating beautiful sculptures and glassware. The printer can layer on melted glass from a reservoir heated up to 1,900 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> Press S for space. Canadian company Thought Technology wants to build a tower that would allow astronauts to take an elevator partway into orbit. Thoth was also granted a U.S. patent for its space elevator, which is modest in comparison to past ideas but promises to significantly reduce the cost of space travel. Hauling payloads on an elevator into near space will eliminate atmospheric drag. Launching them into space from the stratosphere would require less fuel. Thoth estimates this will reduce the cost of space flight by one-third. The firm envisions building a 20-kilometer or 12-mile-high tower, the platform at the top for launching payloads, tourism, observation, scientific research, and communications. It will be made of pressurized stacked cells. The tower would be 20 times higher than Dubai's Burj Khalifa, currently the world's tallest building that soars 830 meters or 2,723 feet into the sky. And before we go, here's the trailer of The Martian starring Matt Damon. This will come as quite a shock to my crewmates and to NASA end of the entire world but i'm still alive surprise in this film damon is an astronaut stranded alone on the red planet he gets some serious work done but will he make it out alive <laughs> that's side tech for you a fun rundown of the nerdiest smartest science and technology events and breakthroughs in the planet this is matthew ang see you next week